Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the hybrid public information meeting for the Orange Blossom Trail resurfacing and pedestrian improvements in Orlando and Orange County. We appreciate you taking the time to learn about this project and provide feedback to us. My name is Lori Epperson. I'm the FDOT De Deputy Project Manager, as well as the engineer of record for this project. Stephen Buck is the project manager, and with me tonight are other FDOT and consultant staff. This meeting will be recorded and will be available to watch on demand by January 13th, 2021. By going to the webpage for the project on our Central Florida website, again, www.cflroads.com. We also have provided a PDF of the presentation and scripts that can be downloaded to your computer during the webinar. You can find it under handouts on the menu to the right of your screen. Also found in that section are comment forms that you can download for later use. For those of you attending in person, you may find comment forms at the sign-in table. Please note that all attendees attending virtually will remain in listen-only mode throughout the meeting. Should you have any questions, we ask that you type questions or comments you have into the question box that appears on the right side of your screen. Other opportunities for input will also be outlined during the presentation. Our team will put together a list of responses that will be uploaded to the project website in a few days. If you are listening to this webinar by phone and do not have access to a computer, we ask that you also please contact me or the FDOT project manager, Stephen Buck, directly by phone or email. The contact information will be provided later in the webinar. We will also send a follow-up email to everyone who registered for this webinar with the contact information for the project. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Eric and we'll begin the presentation. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Lori. Uh, once again, I wanna thank all of you for taking a few minutes uh, from your, your evening to learn about this project. Uh, my name is Eric Troll. I'm a communications consultant with uh, the Florida Department of Transportation. Uh, I'll be walking you through a short presentation regarding the proposed changes on Orange Blossom Trail. Uh, US 1792, US 441, from Holden Avenue to 34th Street. Uh, this project includes roadway resurfacing and pedestrian improvements. Public participation at this meeting is solicited without regard to uh, race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Should you wish to express any concerns regarding FDOT compliance with Title VI, please contact either Jennifer Smith, the District 5 Title VI coordinator by phone at 386-943-5367, by mail at jennifer.smith, the number two, at dot.state.fl.us, or by mail addressed to District 5 Title VI coordinator, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, mail station 506, the land, Florida, 32720. Or Jacqueline Paramore, the state Title VI coordinator, by phone at 850-414-4753. By email at Jacqueline.Paramore, that's J-A-C-Q-U-E-L-I-N-E dot P-A-R-A-M-O-R-E at D-O-T dot state dot F-L dot U-S or by mail addressed to State Title VI Coordinator, 605 Swanee Street, mail station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399. All right, as mentioned, uh, this project is located on Orange Blossom Trail from Holden Avenue to 34th Street in Orange County. Changes are, uh, are being proposed to improve safety and enhance uh, the community along the corridor. Uh, historically, this area has experienced multiple crashes with bicycles and pedestrians, uh, and improvements include uh, visual enhancements, constructing additional pedestrian hybrid beacons, uh, and a number of other safety features to help improve safety. The department has been improving this corridor regularly to respond to these increased bicycle and pedestrian crashes. Prior to 2007, Orange Blossom Trail was a seven lane, 45 mile per hour roadway. In 2007, the department installed three mid-block crossings, 
just north of Holden Avenue at 43rd Street and at 37th Street. By 2012, the construction of raised medians along the corridor was complete, uh, reducing vehicular and pedestrian conflict points. This led to the reduction of the speed limit on the corridor from 45 miles an hour to 40 miles per hour in 2014. And in October 2020, three pedestrian hybrid beacons or PHBs uh, were activated. These were some of the first in Central Florida and by creating these signalized intersections, uh, pedestrians have the ability to activate um, these beacons to mom momentarily stop traffic, allowing pedestrians to cross more easily and in a safe manner. So now we're, we're continuing uh, improvements on Orange Blossom Trail with this project. Uh, throughout the presentation, we'll outline not only the safety features being proposed, but also the community enhancements being proposed along the corridor. Currently, there are three pedestrian hybrid beacons or PHBs located on Orange Blossom Trail uh, activated in October 2020, just north of Holden Avenue at 43rd Street and at 37th Street. This project proposes three additional pedestrian hybrid beacons, making the corridor even easier to cross. This increases safety and access for multiple modes of transportation, especially motorists and pedestrians. The new PHBs are located at 44th Street, 40th Street, and 35th Street. What does this mean for pedestrians? Well, before the implementation of the first PHBs, to cross Orange Blossom Trail safely at a signalized intersection, it could take upwards of 14 minutes and nearly three quarters of a mile. In the illustration here, if a person standing at 44th Street wants to cross safely at a signalized intersection, they would have to walk either south to Holden Avenue or north to 39th Street. As the road stands today, uh, following the activation of the PHBs in October of 2020, the time it takes to cross at a signal has been significantly reduced. Uh, so if a person on the east side of Orange Blossom Trail at 41st Street uh, wants to cross, it could still take five minutes and about a quarter of a mile to reach the pedestrian hybrid beacon on 43rd Street. With the implementation of three additional pedestrian hybrid beacons, uh, pedestrians should be able to cross safely at signalized crossings often in less time than waiting for uh, a clearing in traffic. The maximum crossing time and distance with the proposed PHBs uh, for someone standing mid-block on the 42nd Street block uh, using the PHB at either 43rd or 40th Streets, uh, the most time it would take is approximately three minutes. So from a crossing time of, of 15 minutes prior to the, the installation of the PHBs down to a maximum of approximately three minutes, uh, with the future construction of PHBs, this project will help transform the Orange Blossom Trail for the community that surrounds the corridor. So before we examine other improvements on the corridor, uh, let's take a step back to see how uh, pedestrian hybrid beacons work. A pedestrian hybrid beacon or PHB uh, is an overhead traffic device uh, designed to assist pedestrians in crossing roadways at mid-block crossings. Uh, requiring motorists to stop. So, however, unlike a, a regular traffic signal, uh, the signal face for drivers remains dark until the pedestrian activates the beacon. Pedestrian movements are controlled by traditional pedestrian signals. Let's look at how a pedestrian will interact with the PHB. Uh, upon approaching the crosswalk, pedestrians will notice the orange do not cross symbol. Uh, so pedestrians must not cross. To activate the PHB, pedestrians must push the button uh, and wait for the walk signal. Once a pedestrian has pushed the button to activate the beacon, motorists will be alerted that the pedestrians want to cross uh, and traffic will stop momentarily. When the walk signal appears, uh, pedestrians should look to ensure that traffic has stopped before proceeding into the crosswalk. Uh, when clear, the pedestrian may cross. After a brief period of time, the pedestrian signal will change to a countdown clock, alerting pedestrians that they have limited time to cross. Pedestrians approaching the crosswalk uh, should not begin crossing during the countdown, but rather push the button and wait for the walk symbol to be displayed again. At the end of the countdown, the pedestrian signal will change back to the orange do not cross symbol. Uh, pedestrians should not try to cross this time, but can push the button to activate the beacon again. 
Now let's uh, take a look at how motorists will interact with the PHB. The PHB remains dark until a pedestrian presses the button. Uh, so the motorist may proceed with caution if no pedestrians are in the crosswalk. Next, the, the beacon begins to flash yellow to warn a motorist that it has been activated by a pedestrian wanting to cross uh, and they will soon be required to stop. Uh, the brief flashing yellow is followed by a steady yellow uh, to direct motors that they must stop if they can uh, safely do so, similar to a regular traffic light. Upon the, the uh, light turning red, motors must come to a complete stop at the stop line uh, because pedestrians are in the crosswalk. Uh, when the solid red light changes to a flashing red light, motorists must stay stopped until the crosswalk is clear. Once the crosswalk is completely clear, vehicles may proceed, but each vehicle must stop at the stop bar, just as you would uh, at a traditional red flashing traffic light. Once the flashing red light goes back to dark, motorists may proceed with caution as usual. So with a better understanding of how pedestrian hybrid beacons work, let's take a look at other uh, improvements being proposed on the corridor. So as the road stands today, you have an unobstructed view across all six lanes of traffic and even beyond the curb in most locations on Orange Blossom Trail. The first thing you'll notice as you approach uh, PHBs and the proposed design is that it aims to narrow uh, a motorist view with increased landscaping. Studies have shown that landscaping within a center median can help reduce excessive speeding and increase safety. Uh, making the roadway feel smaller encourages slower, which increases the safety for those using this corridor. Second, enhanced pavement markings will warn motorists that there are, are, they are approaching a pedestrian crossing and to proceed with caution. So these two changes uh, communicate to drivers that they should slow down and be prepared for pedestrians on the upcoming section of the roadway. The three new PHBs, as well as the three existing PHBs uh, will be outfitted with several features that will enhance their effectiveness. As discussed earlier, the beacons are located above the roadway. In addition, enhanced pavement markings highlight a motorist's approach to the crossing. We'll see these in more detail shortly. And the largest feature is the implementation of raised crosswalks. Raised crosswalks are essentially broad, flat-topped speed humps that coincide with pedestrian crosswalks uh, at street intersections. The crosswalks are raised above the level of the roadway to slow traffic, uh, enhance crosswalk build visibility, and make the crossing easier for pedestrians who may have difficulty stepping up and down curbs. These raised crossings have a total width of 43 feet, uh, with 10 foot ramps on each side of a 23 foot raised platform. So back on the roadway, uh, the features of the raised crosswalk are a little more clear. To the right of the rendering, the crosswalk is even with the sidewalk. And to ensure there's no interference with roadway drainage, a grate bridges the channel between the curb and the raised crosswalk. Additionally, pedestrian, uh, a pedestrian fence within the median will help encourage pedestrians to utilize the crosswalks. The fence also helps make pedestrian actions more predictable for motorists, especially at high pedestrian locations, like the Link Super Stops near Holden Avenue. Uh, improvements also include a uh, speed adjustment to 30 miles per hour to help complement the other safety features being implemented and create a safer environment. Zooming out from that same location, uh, the project proposes landscaping, which will add visual enhancements to the entire corridor. As mentioned earlier, by narrowing uh, a motorist's field of vision, it helps create uh, and encourage slower, safer speeds. Landscaping will vary in heights through, throughout the corridor and be emphasized around these crossings. Finally, the proposed enhancements also feature improved pedestrian lighting. In addition to the lights on the overhead beacon, in-road lights will help alert motorists to crossing pedestrians when the pedestrian uh, hybrid beacon is activated. So I'll slow down a, a bit through these next six slides as we examine the changes along the corridor more closely. Uh, and as a reminder, these documents are available on the project's website on cflroads.com. Uh, in the download section of the GoToWebinar toolbar, as well as on display at the South Branch Library through January 12th.
So zooming into the PHB just north of Holden Avenue, uh, adjacent to Orange Blossom Shopping Center and the two links super stops, we can see a number of changes proposed uh, that we have discussed in the previous slides. Uh, the first is raising the crosswalks, also enhancing pavement markings to highlight the crosswalks, in uh, adjusting the speed limit to 30 miles per hour to accommodate these safety features, as well as landscaping and median fencing uh, also visible and will continue throughout the corridor. Moving north, the PHB at 44th Street. Uh, it is one of the three new PHB crossings uh, that is being proposed with this project. Here we can see all of the same features we discussed in the last slide. In addition, there are two new Lynx bus stops, one in each direction of travel. We can also see bulb outs at cross streets, which bring the, the curb further, uh, further out into the street, shortening the crossing distance for pedestrians. Uh, these modifications encourage safer speeds for motorists as they turn into residential neighborhoods off of Orange Blossom Trail. Now at 43rd Street, uh, this PHB adjacent to the Chevron gas station uh, includes the standard improvements uh, that we've discussed on the previous slides. We also see bulb outs at 43rd Street, as well as driveway modifications at some businesses, reducing crossing distances for pedestrians, uh, and in some cases, adjusting the slopes to meet current ADA or Americans with Disability standards. Moving up Orange Blossom Trail to 40th Street, uh, the largest proposed change uh, is the moving of a Lynx bus stop from the 41st Street block north uh, to the 40th Street block. Uh, a new bus stop is being proposed for the northbound side of the street as well. At the 37th Street um, PHB, uh, this one is also existing. Uh, the upgrades continue. So a large change here is the moving of Lynx bus stops. Uh, southbound, the stop will shift half a block south. Uh, and then northbound, the stop will move a block south adjacent to the Shell gas station approaching the corner of 39th Street uh, seen in the bottom of the screen. And finally, uh, the remaining PHB uh, we use bi-directional median uh, islands to help pedestrians cross at 35th Street. The modifications continue here, including raising the crosswalks, uh, enhancing pavement markings, in-road lighting, uh, and curb bulb outs, which translate to uh, shorter pedestrian crossings on these side streets. With the safety features outlined and enhanced aesthetics improving the feel of the street, uh, this project aims to make Orange Blossom Trail more comfortable for pedestrians, cyclists, and motorists alike. Moving forward, the uh, design of this project is anticipated to be complete in summer of 2021. Construction is anticipated to begin in fall of 2021 at an estimated cost of $5.9 million. The improvements will be constructed entirely within the right-of-way um, and therefore will not require property acquisition. The department welcomes uh, your questions and comments, and there are several ways that you can get involved and provide feedback on this project. You can provide a comment using the question box on the, pro the, question box on the project's webpage, uh, or you may contact the FDOT project managers directly. The project webpage can be found at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 44 seven three nine five dash one and then the comment button is located uh, in the right column when viewing on desktop or about halfway down the screen when viewing on a mobile device on this page you will also find a copy of this presentation and all of the exhibits shown today the project manager is stephen buck uh, and can be reached by mail addressed to florida department of transportation attention stephen buck 719 South Woodland Boulevard, mail station 543, Deland, Florida, 32720. He may also be reached by email at Stephen, uh, and that's S-T-E-B-E-N dot buck at D-O-T dot state dot F-L dot U-S. Or by phone at 386-943-5171. Or you may reach the deputy project engineer, Lori Epperson, by email, I'm sorry, by mail addressed to Florida Department of Transportation. Attention, Lori Epperson, 
uh, and that last name is E P P E R S O N 719 South Woodland Boulevard, mail station 552, Deland, Florida 32720. She may also be reached by email at Lori Epperson at dot.state.fl.us. And I'll spell that again. It's L O R I dot E P P E R S O N or by phone at 386-943-5538. The department is also offering uh, an option to view the project plans out the South Trail Branch Library, uh, and that is located at 4600 Orange Blossom Trail in Orlando, Florida at 32839, uh, and that is running through January 12th of 2021. Project plans will be accessible during normal hours uh, from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday. All of that said, we look forward to receiving any questions or comments you may have on this project. Uh, a summary of questions and answers will be placed on the uh, project webpage within a few days time. So I'd like to, to thank you for taking a few minutes from your day to learn about this project. We'll conclude with a drive through the project from Holden Avenue to 34th Street. And please do enjoy the rest of your evening. Once again, on behalf of the, the entire project team, uh, I wanna thank you all for, for taking the time to attend this evening. We're gonna leave this screen up for about five minutes, uh, maybe a little longer, give you guys time to, to jot down any information you, you need, uh, visit the project website, or just enter questions into the question box uh, on the right-hand side of your screen or on your mobile device. But thank you once again, uh, greatly appreciate it and have a great evening.
All right, I'd like to thank everybody for their comments. Uh, as I mentioned in the chat, we will be responding uh, in text. Uh, we'll get it out to, to everybody on the email list uh, that attended this e uh, evening, and then also put it up on the project website for those that may join the, uh, the uh, conversation at a later time. Thank you all, um, and have a very great evening. We will be uh, closing the, the meeting at this time. Have a great night.